Hi there, learning new methods, especially when you're starting as a PhD student or a postdoc in a new lab is going to be an essential part of your success. But sometimes things go wrong and here is a list of some do's and don'ts to do and to avoid when learning new methods. And mostly I'm going to focus on the tradition of methods within the same lab. Now there will be some differences if you go elsewhere to learn new methods, but the differences will not be so great. So basically we'll follow the same workflow, but mostly I'm going to be focusing on you are arriving in a certain lab. Now, how are you being taught these methods? The first point is do make sure that the person teaching you this method is an actual expert in this lab for this particular method. Do not just pick the first possible person that is in this lab because you haven't planned ahead or don't just ask a buddy or a friend of mine because they happen to also be able to carry out this method. Make sure you identify with the help of your supervisor or peers the person that is most knowledgeable about this particular method you want to learn and learn it from them. Don't do any shortcuts. You'll regret them later. Do always go back to the written source of that method. Now the written source is, is super important. Don't rely on just oral information. The written source will also contain very important information about the principle behind this method. And it is important for the vast majority of methods that you're going to be using to really understand the principle behind the method and the importance of the different steps and their significance because only that way will you be able to judge when it is it important to be super precise about something or when it's not so important and when little things that happen during the course of applying this method are going to be important versus not so important, right? And you cannot do this judgment if you're just using it as a cooking recipe and you don't know what the different steps actually do or mean. Therefore, it's important to go back to the written source always. Do not rely on oral traditions because they can fail. They can, the person telling you about something may just accidentally gloss over some important points, for example, or you think you understand something, but in the end you do not, and you have uh, basically not the ability to read things up from a lab protocol or from the original manuscript that described this particular method. Oral traditions are great for relating stories, but they're really not useful for passing on methods. So make sure you always go back to the written source. Do make sure that the first time you apply a certain method, you have somebody very experienced, ideally the person who told you about the method in the first place, look over your shoulder. Because things may seem obvious when somebody explains the various steps to you, but when you actually have to do them yourself, you may be faced with situations that you haven't encountered before. You know, classical example is microscopy of some environmental samples like, oh, what is that? I haven't seen that before. And so it's important that you always have this cross check with the experienced person who taught you the method in the first place, the first time you actually process your own samples. And do not do this on your own and assume you have to figure this out on your own from the point where you have basically finished this initial instruction. This is never the way it works. The, the first time you actually have to do it yourself, there will be a whole bunch of questions popping up, even though it seemed obvious when somebody showed it to you. Do be critical. You know, question, why is this method working this way? Could it be done better? Why are things being done this way? You know, this is the way progress is made. And do not assume a method is basically written down for all eternity. Methods do evolve. Methods improve over time when new information becomes available or when somebody has a new idea on how to really do it better. Do it better, do it more safely, or do it more environmentally compatible. There's, these are all or more or cheaper. So there are all kinds of ways how a method can be improved. And so don't accept things just the way they are now. Always question how they could be improved. There's plenty of examples in our lab where, for example, new people coming in um, looked at some of our methods and said, like, oh well, you could maybe very easily exchange one reagent with, a, with another and it becomes less toxic, for example. Those changes are very welcome 
And so this always happens when people adopt a critical mindset towards a method and don't just passively accept it as a cooking recipe for something. But when they really look at the various steps and understand the method really at a deeper level, then you can think about why is this really the best way to do things and is it really or could it be improved upon. Now that is maybe not worth it for like every single method you're going to be learning or encountering during your PhD, but especially when a method is very central to some response variables that you're going to be collecting that have key importance for your PhD, make sure you really understand that method and critically question it. Finally, do give that method a first trial run with some samples that are not your precious and most important samples because things probably will go wrong the first time you do them. Do do this first time on some extra samples and do not take your most important and precious samples at the very beginning. So I think if you follow these particular guidelines, the passing on of methods within a lab will proceed more efficiently. And of course, some of these assume that your lab has sort of a written documentation of some of the key methods, like in a lab notebook or in a wiki or some form. And if you don't have that in your lab, this would be a great point to ask if this can be done. And of course, you can contribute to that and also help with that process. Finally, it's always worth considering bringing new impetus about a method to a lab by going to some other lab and seeing how they do a certain method or a certain step or what protocols they use. This has in the past been also an eye-opener for us when people went to other labs and saw how things are being done there or when they came from another lab in the first place and said like, oh, we do it like this. Then I think this is a great opportunity to update your methods and to get this influx of information from outside the lab. That is, of course, also important. So I'm quite sure following these points will improve the passing on of methods within your lab and hopefully you have a lot of fun with that. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!